Hello guys, this is CTK Gamer. Today I'm going to show you how to play, uh, restart. Hello guys, this is CTK Gamer. Today I'm doing the fifth or sixth video in a multiple part series, probably eight or so video part series, of how to play Sid Meier's Civilization board game with both expansions. Um, today we're working on phase four, which is movement. So this might take a bit of time, mainly because of the attacking part of this phase, but that's about it. So, yeah, I guess that's what we're doing. So, movement, fairly simple for actual movement. Each figure can move up to whatever your movement speed is. It cannot move into or end its turn in water unless you have an ability that says it can. It can't stay in a city's core, but it can move through it, okay? So, first of all, something to mention, it's called blockading. If you have your unit in the outskirts of an enemy's outskirts, then that part of its outskirts no longer produces whatever this is. So now it's two production, they don't get that two production. If there it's trade, they don't get that trade. If it was gold, they wouldn't get the gold. If it was silk, they couldn't harvest that silk from that space. Now, as soon as you move into either a city or an enemy figure, you immediately attack. If it is a scout, you still get a loot from it. I'll explain loots in a minute. But you do not have to fight. If it's an army, you have to do battle. Now let's say it's a scout here. It's, it's sending this resource home. So not only does this city not get these two production, I'm sending it home to a city of my choice. Okay. So now let's work on flipping over tiles. It takes one movement to flip over tile. You, by the way, units can't move in diagonals at all. So it spends one movement to flip over that tile, okay? So find the arrow, there it is. Have it point the direction that your figure is going, okay? So point away from the direction he's coming from. So I spent one to flip it over, so now I'll move one there. And by the way, right when you flip it over, Find the symbols, the hut and village symbols, or sometimes will be a relic symbol, and put them out there. So you got a hut right there, it's a random one, a village right here. Now huts, sometimes they have resources, sometimes they have good abilities, it depends. I'll just show you a couple examples here. Um, let's see here. This is just a resource. I'm just hoping to get a good variety here. Again, more resources. This is a level 1 tech. You show this to instantly get a level 1 tech. Um... Here's a city-state, so let's, I'll need to quick tell you one more thing that, let's say we have this hut here, right? Only armies can explore huts or villages, but as soon as it moves into a hut, it gets it. If it moves into a village, it has to attack it, okay? And even if you have more movement left, you have to stop moving for that turn, okay? Once you move into hut or village, or relic, actually. So here we've got a city-state. So we discard this, grab the first city estate off the top of the pile, it looks like that. Flip it over and see what it is. It looks like this. That plus four up there means it's plus four defense, and on there it says gold and production. So it's right here where we found it. Now whoever has a figure, whatever team has a figure on this space, is considered to have this building in its outskirts of its capital, okay? So I have a figure here, so right now my capital gets plus four defense a gold, and a production, so I'd increase my gold by one. Now if I would move this off, I wouldn't be getting that, so I'd decrease my gold by one, okay? So right now let's pretend he's here. Now let's see what other stuff there is. If you want to, you can build a city on top of this if it's an illegal space, and it goes away. However, you cannot have this in your outskirts when you want to build something. Same with the relics, actually. You can't have that in outskirts of the city you want to build. Okay, what other hut type things are there? Um... Again, more resources. Uh, I just want to find a specific thing. Here we go. This looks good. Three culture. You immediately spend that to get three culture. There's some that have more culture than three. I believe six is the other number. Um, now, villages tend to have better stuff. There is uranium, which is a really good resource in huts, but they're mainly found in villages. This is what uranium looks like. It's on the back of a hut. This is the resource you spend to nuke people if you get the Atomic Theory, which is a level 4 tech. Again, here's some more uranium. Now, this right here is a great person. 
As you can see, it looks like a great person token. So I've already shown you how to get great persons. You'll grab the card, find the matching dude, and that's how it works. One thing to mention though, you can blockade great persons. So if you have that, then that, first of all, you don't get its abilities, but also then your great person hand has to be reduced, which is something I didn't mention before. So your culture hand has a specific number. Your great person hand, how many great person cards you can have, which are one time cards, those you kind of just, you can only have as many as great persons you have. So if you have three great persons, you can only have three great person cards at a time. So if you lose a great person or get it blockaded or have it in your reserve, then you have to discard down to the number. And one other thing to mention, culture cards are also one time use. But basically any card you spend, once you're done using it, you put it face up at the bottom of the pile, including military cards if they die. And then once you've used all these and get to the first face up card, you flip all the face car cards over and shuffle them. Okay? So that's good. same with everything. Great persons, which you'll probably never go through that entire deck though. Uh, military units, culture cards. So yeah. Except for text. Text, you get to choose your tech. Oh, I got the leg of my tripod in the camera. Oh well. <laughs> uh, let's see what else you get with villages. More uranium, Dane. More uranium. Oh, here's a plus six. This is a resource spy. Um, I could have sworn. Oh, here, this gold. You get the gold token. Okay, so that's the majority of stuff. Anything else? It is in the rule book. I believe on the back pages of all three rule books. So if you like, you can always just look in there for any other references in case I missed something, which I might have. So yeah, um, what else for movements? So basically we have two movement speed right now. You can increase that by getting different texts. Can't move in diagonal, so we can move there. You can move there, whatever you want. Now, the last main thing for movement, which scares me to death to have to talk about, because it's just so comp well not complicated, but big and long, is the attacking. Now you can attack... Um, and don't be surprised if I forget about something. I'm sorry if I do. So, oh, it's so hard. So basically, once an army moves into either a city, uh, enemy figure, or a village, you immediately conduct combat. Now, it's, there is a certain number of cards or units you can bring. So basically... First of all, you have to shuffle your cards because you don't choose what you bring to battle. Now, this is how many cards you can bring. If you're defending a capital city, uh, uh, any city actually, you get six cards. And if you're attacking or defending, it doesn't matter. For each, for your first army figure, you get three cards. For every army figure after that, you only get two more. Keep in mind your stacking limit. So if you have a stacking limit of two, you can't have three units attack the same spot, even if they're coming in from different directions. Okay? So, if you are... Let's see. There are different... I believe there are different governments and other things that will increase your hand size. Your military hand size. Now... <sighs> so much to talk about. Um, if you are uh, attacking a village, then the person to the left of you plays for the village, and the village you get from the market board, uh, one artillery, one infantry, and one mountain, they're all at level one. So once you've got it, so let's say we're, that we're, we get to bring three cards to the battle, randomly chosen, and say we're attacking the village, they get their three cards. So right now we're all at level one, right? So we'll come over here, and right about now, actually before I come, I need to count up my, my military bonuses. So if you're defending the city, you get whatever this plus 12 or whatever the symbol is here. And good thing to mention that you can unlock the level 1 tech masonry to be able to spend 7 production to get walled cities, which is better defense. So if you're defending the city, you get that bonus, which is a shield. And there's other things too, like great generals. So basically, actually, this symbol right here, the orange explosion type thing with the number in it, that's a military bonus. So there's some on shipyards, barracks. Some cards are actually on diplomacy cards, government cards, stuff like that. Oh, sorry, policy cards, not diplomacy cards. Even on um, investment cards, actually, the military industrial com complex investment card. So there's a lot of ways to get those. So basically, you add them up. And 
obviously barbarians don't get them. But let's say, for example, that we were attacking a player. So let's say we had six military bonus and they had eight. These are the cards to represent that, and we don't have enough to be able to have both people have military bonuses. So instead, we have six, they have eight. Instead, at the end, it doesn't matter anyway because it's whoever has the most. So we just deduct, do a little bit of subtraction. So we divide, we take away the smaller number from the bigger number. So they have eight, we have six. So instead, I have a bonus of zero and they have a bonus of two, if that makes sense. If I had three and they had seven, then they'd have a bonus of four, okay? So we get any bonuses we might have. For right now, we're attacking barbarians, no bonuses, but for the sake of example, we'll pretend that we have a plus three, a plus two bonus, okay? But we don't actually, but we need to <laughs> pretend, okay? So next, get the wound tokens, bring them over here, okay? Get all your cards to the level one side. Now the defender plays their card first, and then unless you're attacking a walled city, then the attacker does. So right here, get it all on the level one side, because that's what level we're at. Okay, then two, level one, like that. Okay, so the defender plays first, so let's say they place that card. So you'll notice, let's get a face up, there's multiple symbols. This right here is the unit it trumps, which is infantry. This is what it is itself, which is artillery. This is its level, which right now is one. This is its health, which is two, and how much attack it does, which is two. So we're right here, zoom in a little. So he's played that, that's called opening a new front. So now, let's, we can either counter that front by putting a card here, or open a new front by putting one next to it. And then he'll have the option to do the same. So let's see, he has two health, and we really want to kill him, right? So, sometimes though it's better not to. So, we do three damage to him, and he does two damage to us. So since no one trumps each other, and it, then they're both dead, right? So we'll go off to the side. And later we'll put them at the bottom face up of the unit piles, because they're dead. So I play the card last, so now he plays one. He plays his mounted. Now I see here I have infantry which trumps that, and I'll tell you what trumping means. So right now, I deal one damage and he has one health. He deals three damage and I have three health. So we would kill each other perfectly, but infantry, as you see right here, if you can even see, they trump mounted, and he's a mounted. So if I trump someone, that means I deal my damage before them. So I deal my one damage to him, which kills him. And now since he's dead and I dealt my damage before him, he doesn't have the chance to attack me back. So he's dead. Okay? Now if I didn't trump him, or I didn't have enough damage to actually kill him, then he damned, he'd deal his damage to me. But in this case, I kill him. And then he will play this. No, he'll open it there. No, he'll put it here. So he they're the same card, so no one trumps each other. So he does two damage to me, I have three health. So he puts two wounds on me, because I'm not he didn't completely kill me. I deal one to him, like that. And then I still have one card left, so I just put it there. So now to determine who wins, you add up your bonuses and other stuff. So first of all, add up your attack value of your units. So we have four, five, then deduct your wounds. So we have five minus two, three. Now these dudes are still alive, so we can put them away. So we have three. He has two, two minus one, which is one. So we have three as one. And this is when the bonus would come in play. If we had a bonus, we'd add it up to our number right now. Okay? So we had more, a higher the number than him, so we win. Now all the village things and the dead units go back um, face up underneath the units they belong to. Unless you have ability that says you can save them. So now we won, right? So we take our surviving units and bring them back. And since this is just an example, I'm going to actually not have a loss of my dudes. Because <laughs> I'm keeping the board set up for a later video of example of play. But his dude sure will die. Wait a minute. I have one extra. <laughs> I think. Oh yeah, that's his. Okay. No. I don't know. I'll figure it out later. Okay. So then if that was a village we were just attacking, we would win. And we'd get the resource. If we lost, then we lose. Now there's a couple things to think about. So it's actually on your battle outcome reference sheet. So if the winner loses, no, the winner loses one figure, so the army piece,
for every two um, units the die, okay? I but you can never lose your last one. I only had one, so it doesn't matter. But let's say I was attacking with two units and I lost three dudes, then that means I'd lose one unit. It's also on your battle reference sheet, so if this doesn't make sense, you can read it yourself. <laughs> um, then the loser loses every figure in that square. Okay, so now let's worry about loot. Oh, actually, if you destroy a city, if it's a capital city, you obviously win the game. If it's not a capital city, you destroy all the buildings. Great P... Yeah, the buildings, the great people, and the wonders, and the city. Okay, so now let's talk about loot. So basically, you get one loot for defeating a figure. You don't get two for defeating two. Just if you defeat at least one figure, I should say, you gain one loot. If you defeat a city, you gain two loot. If you defeat a capital, you win. So let's see what you can spend for your loot. If you have one loot, you can steal three points of trade, or three culture, or one resource, or you can force them to discard one coin token, okay? Not coins that are printed on the board, but coin tokens. If you choose a resource that's a hut or a village, you don't see what it is, you just see the back, and you have to randomly choose it, okay? Now, if you have two loots, you can either buy two one loots, which you could buy the same thing or different things, or you could buy one two loot. <laughs> so the two loots, you can copy a tech, so like learn a tech they have learned without having to spend trade for it. Assuming you have a legal space for it, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Steal a culture event, so the culture event card's up there. Again, you don't see them, you look at the backs. Or steal one coin token. So the level 1 loot was to force them to discard one. The level 2 is that you steal it. Okay? So that is it, basically, for military. So that is it for this video, I'm pretty sure, actually. So now we'll... Thanks for watching, and in the next video, we will be talking about um, research.